Hi, my name is Vanessa De Berlay, and in this video, I'm going to teach you five basic traits that you need to master as an entrepreneur. In our business, we keep doing things. You're probably out there trying to um, take more courses and you're trying to learn how to schedule your time and you're trying to learn all the skills that you need to build this huge business. You're out there doing email marketing and e-commerce and uh, you could make a whole list and you're probably feeling overwhelmed, right? And you're focusing all your attention on what can I do, 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 do. But have you thought about what you need to become? What do I need to be? Because maybe you're at the point in your business where you are doing all those things and you're doing them all correctly. You're comparing yourself to people who are successful and you're like, shoot, my videos are better than theirs or, or my funnel. Look, you know, you're, you're seeing that and you're like, why are they making tons of money and I'm not? Or why are they where they're at and I'm not? It's because part of it is up here. It's not just about what you're doing, but it's what you're becoming. How do you see yourself? How, how are you? How are you um, identifying yourself? You might still be identifying yourself as that nine to five person working in the factory or you know, teaching or a nurse or whatever it is that you are. Are you identifying as an entrepreneur inherently, not just on the outside? So we're gonna talk about those skills on the inside. I wanna tell you a little story before we get started on the different five different traits, because um, this really resonated with me. My youngest daughter, um, after she left home, um, she rented, you know, an apartment for a few years. And then um, just recently she and her husband bought a house and I'm like, oh, great. Every time the kids leave, I give them all their stuff that they left at home when they get a house. I don't give it to them when they have an apartment because I understand that's the time of your life where you're moving every year or so. So she gets her house. It has a nice a big basement, a garage, you know, it's got plenty of room. And I said, okay, we're going to start sending all your stuff. And she goes, I can't think of anything that you have at that house that I need. And I said, well, let's just start going through the boxes. We'll do it over the phone. And then that way I'll get rid of it from here because she lives a couple hours away. And it was funny. She made a statement after we really just purged all her stuff. She goes, I'm not that person anymore. And I thought, wow, for her to say that at 25 and here I am 50 still still holding on to those old traits of myself she was like I'm not that person anymore that person liked that stuff but I'm this person so think of use that in your business like I'm not that nine to five person anymore I'm not that nurse or the factory worker or the you know garbage collector or the fast food worker or the waitress who are you now and think of yourself as an entrepreneur this is who I am. So let's get started on five traits that you can start working on and don't stop. That's going to help you with that mindset. Number one, adaptability. Make sure you are adaptable. And the reason I say this is because when you start your business, you're going to have an idea. It could be broad. It could be very specific. Everybody starts from a different place. Some of us just aren't really sure, you know, but we, but we know we want to work online. So be ready to go with the ebbs and the flows of the business and be willing to grow into your niche if that makes sense you may have this wonderful idea to go into health and fitness and you're going to serve women between 30 and 40 i don't know whatever your niche is that's pretty small maybe 30 to 50. um the moms that are in that part of their life where they have kids and they're running around and just life is crazy right and you find that maybe you were better at touching younger girls that don't have children yet you know maybe somehow your audience tended to be a different age group than what you thought you were reaching so that's where you need to start going okay well obviously i'm attracting these people so i'm really going to start focusing on serving them instead of this group don't stay stuck in that thinking that i have to serve women 30 to 50 because that's what i said so be adaptable um i noticed even on my youtube videos i had this idea of um what kind of videos i wanted to make way in the beginning and it was very interesting that some of my top videos weren't the ones <laughs> that I thought would be. So it made me change some of my thinking as I develop my channel. And it's becoming more um, focused, if that means more deliberate, where in the beginning I was just trying to, um, my focus was in a different place, if that makes sense. So um, be willing to change with that and be adaptable. And another part of adaptability, I know sometimes, especially if you're a very 
schedule oriented person and i'm going to use the word ocd in the in the sense of not as a disease um i know that people that really have it i used that word before and got attacked but i i want you to understand someone who's very tenate you know tenacious they really have everything scheduled and then when something doesn't go right you really get off course um there's people like that um and i do sometimes because i have a list and i'm like this is what i was supposed to do today but let's say i had my list and i was supposed to make four videos that day and my internet went down i i live out in the country i have a satellite and sometimes the internet just starts working slower it's not working and i have learned that okay i got three done it's okay that the fourth one's not done or it's okay that I didn't get any done, go do something else. There's a lot of work that I can do that's offline. At the very, very least, I can go read one of my books that I read to help me with my business. I always have three or four books that um, I'm digging into. I always have um, a notebook where I put my ideas. So there's always something I can do if the internet goes down or my computer's not working so that's that's being adaptable don't just get stuck in oh i gotta go to here maybe there was a site you were using Um, maybe you were working on your website and the site went down for maintenance or something and you just don't blow up just say you know what i'll work on that later i'll go do something else so be adaptable with this entire business because um it you're only going to get better if you kind of go with the flow if that makes sense Number two, be teachable. Um, I have heard, and, and you're probably like this, but so many of us think I can do this all by myself. I know what to do. I've got this. I'm going with it. I don't care how good you are, how much research you've done, how much studying you've done. You need to be teachable. Find others that can help you um whether you're watching other people's youtube videos or you've taken a course or maybe you've decided to hire a coach but don't think you know it all um there's other people that have paved that path before you and they're successful they know what they're doing so learn from them and don't now with this don't go overboard and just spend your day all day long just following everybody else find two or three people that you really resonate with that you really um find that you know they're the ones i i I find myself connecting with and and what and follow them if that makes sense or take one of their courses um uh, most people that are very successful are taking courses i remember um kevin david he's huge um he's with click funnels and he um, had a funnel last year that made over 10 million dollars in one funnel and i remember watching him on a webinar or something and he said i remember when i was new i thought i had it all figured out and i didn't want anybody to help me and i tried to do it all myself and he says it wasn't until i started letting somebody else coach me he hired a coach and he started outsourcing that's when big things started to happen. So if somebody that big says that, then you know it's true, right? Because he's extremely successful and you constantly see ads popping up with his name on them. So listen to the people who've been there because they're doing something right. Number three, confidence. And I know you hear this all the time, but there's so many people that jump into to wanting to start a business and they don't believe in themselves and they don't believe in what they're offering. And even if you have a fantastic product, think of a car salesman, okay? They're selling this beautiful car that everybody would want, a convertible, I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's at a good price. And if, if that salesman comes out and has no confidence in themselves and confidence in the product that they're selling you, you're going to walk away. Or even if you go into a furniture store, think about that. You know, something more realistic, right? And you're going to buy a couch and you really like this certain one and you're asking questions and they're not really knowledgeable and confident in that product, then you're not going to want to buy from them. So that's how you have to be. Believe in your business. Believe that you're going to make it. Believe in the product that you're selling. And if you don't have that confidence in those areas right now, then really work on that. And I want you to believe in yourself too, because sometimes we believe in our business and we believe in the product, but then we don't believe that we can do it. We don't think we're, um, we don't have enough self confidence. We don't think we're worthy um, to have it. Does that, have you ever felt that way where you just feel like you're, why would, you know, why would God bless you with something like this? Because maybe you feel like you've been a bad person in your life, or maybe you just don't have that self-worth. Believe in yourself. You do deserve it. You are capable of accomplishing these things. 
no matter what you have to overcome. There's so many people out there that have had stories that are unbelievable, what they've had to overcome to get to where they're at. And that's how life is supposed to be. It's hard. Everybody has different hardships in their life, but it's those that put those hardships behind them and continue to believe in themselves no matter what has happened and they go forward and they have that self-worth and that belief that they deserve it because they've worked hard. And I don't mean in a victim way or an entitlement way. I mean in a way that, hey, I'm just as good as anybody else out there and I, I can work just as hard as they can and I can have that too and I believe it. Now, the second part of confidence, talking about worth, I'm going to go into your product because this one, I think we all go through this, but did you notice that some people will sell a course for $97 and then somebody else will sell a course for $2,000? What makes the second one more valuable? You might even look at both courses and go, mm, they're pretty comparable. Why is this one 97 and this one is 2000? It's because the person who made it does not feel like their course is worth it. They haven't put the value on it. And I'm going to use my husband as an example because he is a fantastic uh, construction person. He works for himself. He doesn't really go out and build houses and things, but he'll go out and do remodeling and things like that for people. And he has a tendency who has in the past to not really charge enough. Like he, and even, you know, he might drive somewhere and then only charge X amount for the project. And then, you know, in his heart, even though he's really good, I think he felt like he didn't want people to feel like he was ripping them off. And he finally got to the point one day, he goes, I'm not working for less than X amount per day. And he went out and did a job and charged it. And for him, it still wasn't what everybody else was charging. But I remember the look on his face, like, okay, I'm going to do this. And we sent the person the bill and they go, okay. And he was like, wow. And you have to put that worth on yourself and on your work or whatever service you have or on your product and believe in it. If people, I know it's all psychology, but did you notice that there are people out there that will spend $6,000 on a purse because it costs $6,000 and they wear it because they paid more for it. So they see it as being more valuable. Um, is that purse really worth $6,000? I know there's a, you know, when you look at materials and stuff, maybe if it's pure leather or whatever, it has rhinestones on it or, but the point is, is it really worth it? It's only worth it because somebody's willing to pay it. So be worth it. Look at what you're doing. And, and I agree, most people with courses will start at a lower price and then as they get testimonials, they start increasing, but that's what you need to do. Um, look at your prices, look at your price points on things that you're selling and do you have the confidence and do you see the value in, in, in the price that you're charging? Okay. So don't undercut yourself because people will see that in you and then they'll think, well, why doesn't she think or he think it's worth it? Then why should I think it's worth it? So think about that. Number four kind of goes along with that. It's posture and posture means being that confident person, like physically. Now I told you mentally to do all these things, right? And now I want you to physically be that person, act as though you are that successful entrepreneur. And I'm not saying go crazy and buy all these expensive things and look the part. I'm saying be the part, have posture, smile when you're talking. I know sometimes I probably tend to forget to do that because I'm a teacher and I'm always, you know, in that teaching mode, but smile, you know, Notice how people's eyelids, you know, brows raise when they're talking and they have a smile on their face. And then when people don't have a smile on their face and they just look like this, there's, there's just something about the way your face lights up when you put a smile on your face, hand gestures. That's my Italian blood. It's nothing I'm <laughs> doing on purpose, but hand gestures, you know, get excited, be excited, be positive. When you are positive, that energy just flows to other people and do it all the time. Not just when you're trying to be in your business, be that positive person, be that person that has that posture of confidence and, and owns a business. All right. So that's what you want to work on. All these things are interconnected. So it should be easy for you to put them all together. And the last one we want to talk about is work ethic. Are you, I'm going to say that 99% of the people that say, I want to be an entrepreneur and, and really start their business. I'm not talking about the dreamers. I'm talking about the people that really 
jump in and get their feet wet, they dive into the deep end of the pool, are usually people that work hard and they have found that I am tired of working for somebody else. I'm tired of working four or five jobs. I'm tired of the, the daily grind and not having control over my life, right? That's probably you. Have that kind of work ethic that with anything you do, whether you're working at McDonald's or serving tables or working in a factory, go above and beyond of what's required of you. And that's having a good work ethic. Now, for those of you that are on here and you know who you are, you're not that kind of person. You're like, oh, that's not me. I usually just go to work and do whatever I have to do, or I'm pretty lazy. I come home after work and lay on the couch and watch TV. That's fine. Then those of you, I'm going to talk to you, is start practicing going above and beyond. Go into work with an attitude that says, I don't care what this job is, but I'm going to give it everything I have. And I'm always every day going to do one thing extra that I don't have to do. Um, I read a book by um, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, he wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And in the book, he tells a story how his friend's dad got him and uh, he and his friend a job. And they had to go sweep or something at the local hardware store. I can't remember the exact story, but I remember this part. And he told the guy was only giving them like a quarter an hour or something like that. It was just ridiculously low. And both the boys wanted to quit. They're like, this isn't enough. We're worth more than that. And the rich dad told them, if you're not willing to work for free, then you're never going to be successful. You have to be willing to give more to others than what you're getting back before you're going to earn that right to be successful. And I remember years ago, I had um, something happen in my life where I just had to get out of the house and, and get a job. And I ended up at McDonald's and I was in my 20s. So I wasn't like a young teenager. I was probably pushing 30 and thinking, oh my gosh, here I'm at McDonald's. But I remember they put me in the window and I was, like I said, I was going through something in my life, which isn't the point where I was just devastated with something that happened. And I had all these people coming through the window that knew the story and the gossip. And, and I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to hold my head high and I'm going to put those cokes out the window like they've never gotten before and just do an amazing job and have an amazing attitude. And it was unbelievable how healing that was in everything, not just in the personal things, but even my work ethic, because the, I mean, I was recognized by the management. I mean, within two weeks, they wanted, make, wanted me to be a supervisor because I had such a good positive attitude. And I'm thinking if they only knew what was going on inside, you know, but that's what happens. People are drawn to you when you have this work ethic that, you know, you're willing to jump in and get things done and, and you're willing to respect your boss. Even if you can't stand them, you respect them. Now you're probably thinking, why are you talking about this? You're, we're, I want to be an entrepreneur. You do, but if you can't work that way for other people, how are you going to work that way for yourself? As an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you're working for yourself. And what kind of employee are you going to be? So those are your five tips. Um, hopefully, um, you'll go back through those and work on those five traits and just adopt them into your life in every area of your life. And you're going to find that things will start to happen. Now, before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's a little bell that um, you can hit for notifications. I put out a video six times a week as of this date for every Saturday well, every Monday through Saturday, six times a week, 3.30 every day. And I, what kind of videos do I make? I want to teach you how to earn money, how to save time, and how to find balance in your life. So if that's what you're looking for, then hit that notification button and subscribe to my channel. And I promise to provide you with videos that will help you in those areas. You have a good one. And since you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I appreciate it.